Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to the latest Opinion Poll Tracker video here on the Game Parks' YouTube channel. So, uh, this is the uh, Tracker video for April 2023, looking at uh, the uh, latest prediction from Electoral Calculus for the next UK general election, and also the Opinion Polls that that uh, prediction was based upon that were conducted during March 2023, and I shall get on with that for you in a moment, just say that if you're enjoying the vlogs here on the channel, then please can you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody, uh, for uh, doing that. And uh, make sure you you, you uh, drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and vlogs here on the channel. Thank you so very much, everybody. Uh, right, OK, so uh, we shall move over to Electoral Calculus and we'll have a look at their latest prediction for the next UK general election. Shall we do that? Why not? So in three, two, one, here we go. And uh, the latest prediction is a Labour majority of 264 massive Labour majority still predicted at the next UK general election landslide majority Although that is uh, 54 down on the prediction from last month, based on February's opinion polls, um, when we did uh, the tracker video in uh, March um, of uh, 2023. So, massive Labour majority expected, but uh, that is 54 down on the previous month. Right, let's go through the data then and see how uh, the uh, the uh, shares and whatnot are stacking up on that prediction. So, uh, of course, start off with the current prediction is a Labour majority, 264, that headline. So, we've got our party con just here, Conservative, Labour, Liberal Democrats, etc. 2019 votes and seats just here. And then these are the predicted votes and uh, seat shares. There is a margin of error, of course, with any uh, polling. And so um, you've got a low uh, end of the range and a high end of the uh, range. And you've got the central prediction just here. So in uh, 2019, the Conservative Party got 44.7% of the vote, basically 45%. Their highest vote share in the general election since the 1970 general election, <coughs> excuse me, which gave them 365 seats. Whereas Labour got 33% uh, of a vote, which gave them 203 seats. Uh, and that was their worst uh, seat share since the 1935 general election. Liberal Democrats were on 11.8% of the vote with 11 seats. Reform, as it was then, Brexit Party on 2.1% and no, points, uh, no seats. Uh, Greens were on 2.8% with one seat. SNP were on 4% which gave them uh, 48 seats, and uh, Ply on 0.5%, which gave them four seats. Right, so the uh, central prediction is for the Conservatives now to be on 27.2% of the vote, Labour on 46.1% of the vote, Liberal Democrats on 9.4% of the vote, and reform on 5.6, Greens on 5, uh, SNP on 3.8, and uh, applied still on 0.5. So that gives the Conservatives a central seat prediction of just 113 seats. That would be their worst uh, performance in a general election ever. I think, um, you know, you, in history, I don't think they've ever had a performance as bad as that. At the low end of the range, they could go down to just 41 seats. At the high end of the range, they could go up to, or they could be up at 244 seats. Labour have a central prediction to be on 457 seats. At the low end, 329. At the high end, uh, five, uh, 539, 500. And 39. Notice that even at the very lowest end of the range, Labour are still above the only point 326 they need to get an overall uh, majority. Uh, the Liberal Democrats on 20 seats at 9.4% of the vote. So tactical voting is bad. I've spoken about this in uh, previous tracker videos, despite the fact that Liberal Democrats are actually predicted to get a lower seat share 
at 9.4% of the vote they did in 2019, when they were on 11.8%. Despite that, they actually have a central prediction of like doubling their seats, going from 11 to 20, which um, tells us that tactical voting is back. So where the Liberal Democrats are the main challenges to the Conservative Party, uh, Labour uh, supporters will be voting for the Liberal Democrats in some of those seats tactically to uh, get the get the Conservative out. So tactical voting returns for the first time since probably the 2010 general election. At the low end of the range, Liberal Democrats, they go down to eight. At the high end, they could be up to uh, 34. No, uh, no seats for a reform, um, despite being on 5.6% of vote. One seat for uh, Greens. Uh, SNP is interesting because Nicola Sturgeon has resigned, and we know um, her travails that are currently um, going on in her, her back garden at the moment. Um, so um, the central election for, for the SNP is 36 seats. Um, which is uh, only like um, nine down on the forty-eight they got in um, in uh, in twenty nineteen. Uh, below end they could go down to sixteen. At high end they could uh, stay up at forty-nine. It will be interesting to track the SNP um, score there. If the SNP see a reduction, as I have a feeling they may do. Uh, over the next few weeks and months, that would almost certainly primarily go to Labour. A little bit might go to the Conservatives, but primarily, and the Democrats, but that will primarily go uh, back to Labour, I think, and increase uh, the, the Labour position. So the SNP will be interesting to keep an eye on over the uh, next uh, month or two. And then plied down at four seats with uh, a, a high end range of five and a low end range of two. Notice that the uh, central position for the SNP at 36 is now under the lowest uh, seat share seat share, I should say, for the Conservatives at 41. However, at the high end for the S&P, 49. They're still above the 41. The Conservatives, run to, uh, uh, the Conservatives uh, get at their lowest end of the range. We have had a bit of chatter, you know, about um, if the Conservatives, if the S&P were above the Conservatives, the seats would they form the, uh, the, the overall uh, opposition to the Labour government, and in this case that they would, despite being a strong Tony party, it doesn't matter, you know, just bottoms on benches that counts if they have more uh, bottoms on those green benches than any other party, then they will form the official opposition. But it looks like that is beginning to uh, recede, but uh, what was already a remote possibility. Uh, anyway, uh, Labour majority of 264 is the central prediction. Let's have a look at the uh, polls that they were based on. There were a lot of polls during uh, March. Look at all of these. I haven't got time to go through all of them, so I'll just highlight a few. There's a bit of a divergence um, appearing in March with some of these polls. So we still see some very large uh, Labour leads on some of those polls. For example, we've got people polling at uh, 25 uh, uh, to 25%, I should say, for Labour. Uh, Conservatives as low as 20% and Labour on 45% of the vote uh, with that particular opinion poll. At the same time, we have Delta poll here that has the Conservatives up to 35% of the vote. Their best score in an opinion poll for several months. Uh, Labour on 45%, giving uh, Labour a leave just 10%, which is still pretty solid, but, you know, nothing like 25% uh, lead. Um, elsewhere, we can see that we have Savanta here, giving uh, Labour a 15% lead, while Omnisys gives Labour a 24% lead. Um, YouGov, the uh, ever-reliable YouGov, gave Labour a 22% lead in that particular part for the 8th of March for the Times. Big lead there is YouGov, Conservatives down 23, Labour on 45% of the vote with uh, that poll. By the way, the Omnisys uh, poll... Uh, has uh, Labour at fifty percent, so um, and Delta Poll just here uh, with a twenty-three percent Labour lead also had uh, Labour on fifty percent, Conservatives on twenty-seven percent. So there's a lot of variability between uh, not just the, the poll, but not just the individual pollsters, but also uh, the polls um, themselves. So so Delta Poll interesting uh, on this poll from the tenth to the thirteenth of March. 
um, gives Labour 23% lead, but on their next poll uh, from the 17th, 20th of March, that comes down to just a 10% lead uh, for for Labour. So quite significant change there. Um, going for a little bit uh, further up, we've got uh, Ipsos Murray, um, which is our oldest uh, pollster now. They've been doing a regular opinion polling since 1970s. They had Labour on 23% of the vote. Uh, so that uh, Labour on uh, 49% there. That, they get, have Labour on 23% lead, I should say. Uh, they have Labour on 20, 49% of vote. Conservatives were on 26% of the vote. Uh, we will be having a look in a separate video at, um, at the leadership ratings uh, with uh, Mori. Uh, I'm going to do that every month. We'll be looking at uh, the, the leader ratings with Mori. They have a very long, uh, long-standing long data, you know, going all the way back to, in the mix of time. So, because um, it's that the leadership rating uh, ratings for um, Starmer and uh, Sunak are not updated that regularly at uh, Wiki. So what I'm going to do in a separate video once a month is go through the leader ratings um, with uh, with Murray, with Ipsos, uh, our oldest pollster. So that will be coming up in a few days' time. Uh, we also had a pinion right at the end of the month, giving Labour a 15% lead. Um, no, 29% conservatives, 44% to uh, Labour there. So it looks like the Labour lead with a lot of the pollsters it's still in the 20s, but a few of the pollsters have the Labour lead like in the bid to upper teens. Um, now anything from like 15 to 25 percent is uh, is the range of Labour lead, which is still really healthy, you know, it's really good for Labour, but it has come down very slightly on uh, what we saw in um, the last tracker. So this is the overall, uh, uh, this is the overall graph for um, uh, opinion polling right way from the 2019 general election. So you can see that um, the Conservatives are up here, or up, well, were up there at the start of the Parliament, Labour down there, big Conservative lead at the beginning of uh, 2020 after 2019 general election. Uh, we go into the pandemic, of course, through 2020, and the lead sort of narrows, and we always get crossover taking place between Conservatives and Labour. And then with the vaccine rollout, the Conservative lead increases through uh, the first half of 2021. However, from the order of 2021, we get crossover between Labour and Conservatives. And since the end of 2021, Labour have had a consistent polling lead. So uh, through most of the first half of 2021, the Labour lead was consistent, if not particularly spectacular, Around 10% lead between Conservatives and Labour. Conservatives get rid of Boris, they bring in uh, this trust, and you can see what happens. The, uh, the Conservative share absolutely collapses, it craters after the mini budget. Labour soars off into the stratosphere. Uh, Rishi comes along, Rishi Sunak comes along, and uh, the uh, Conservative uh, lead goes up a little bit, but not a lot. Actually, I think Conservatives would have been hoping for more of an increase to their. Uh, lead after replacing Trust for Sunak. Um, Labour's lead comes down a little bit but stays really, really uh, large. Now, what we see right at the very end, uh, this is primarily from March, really, is the uh, Labour train line just inching down a little bit. So, um, you know, it's not anything dramatic, but that has been a bit of a drop through March in the uh, Labour in the Labour lead. And we see their trend line come down. The Conservative lead also lifted up a little bit during March. And then has kind of like, this takes us into April, actually, kind of like flat line since then. So there's been a very slight increase in the Conservative um, share there. Uh, the Conservative share has increased very, very slightly. The Labour lead has decreased very slightly in the Labour share has decreased very slightly, but still with a very, very, very commanding uh, lead and commanding position for for uh, Labour. Overall government approval is looking like this. Government still very, very unpopular, not quite as unpopular as it was back in February when uh, government disapproval was just here. This review got, by the way, their tracker for uh, government approval. Um, no, not quite as um, unpopular. Now, we're just here on 63% disapproving to 16% approving. Not quite as bad as they were, like, back in February. 
then the, the gap was just there. I think that's February. Let's just go here. Um, no, 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 that's actually from October. Right, that's from, like, the depths of uh, 17th October, my birthday. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, that was the worst issue for the government's approval and disapproval. 77% disapproving, just 8% approving of the government. That is when, of course, after the... Uh, mini budget and <laughs> everything uh, crashed um, in uh, in the autumn. So since then, we've seen a slight recovery in government in the government uh, approval rating. However, they are still very very unpopular. The government is still really unpopular at sixty three percent disapproving. Um, we've seen that the government approval is almost now uh, back to the don't know. So remember, I've spoken about this before when government approval goes under those that say they don't know, haven't got a view, um, then, <laughs> you know, a government is in real trouble. And that's the grey line. So you can see almost now the number of people that are approving of the government is back to the don't knows. Um, however, it is still a very unpopular, uh, you know, very unpopular government, quite clearly. And uh, whilst a slight but sort of slight improvement of both the government and the Conservative position. Um, things are still looking uh, really quite, quite grim uh, <laughs> for the government, to say the least. Right, let's go back to electoral characters then. So, in summary, in closing, um, the uh, prediction for this month from electoral characters is a Labour majority of 264 at the next UK general election. And um, we shall wait and see how things looking when we do our next track of video, which of course will be in May, based on April's opinion poll. So, could be another video coming up later on looking at uh, approval and disapproval, uh, personal rating essentially um, between uh, the party leaders. So that be coming up uh, in in a few days' time. That will be based on Ipsos Mori and uh, on their polling, and we will do that every month, you know, because um, that's a very long-lasting, a very consistent uh, uh, tracker that they've been doing for many years, looking at uh, at the leadership ratings of the party uh, leaders. So that'll be coming up uh, in a video uh, in, a, in, in, in a few days' time. Right, if you've enjoyed this uh, UK general election opinion poll tracker video and uh, general election prediction, then please can you like, share, and subscribe on video drop a comment let us know what you think about this all of our videos and we thank you so much dear about more vlogs coming up for you on the channel very very soon of course we get closer to general election these uh, videos will get uh, more frequent as well general general election is likely to be next year sometime so um as we go through the next 12 to 18 months obviously these videos will get more regular Right then, uh, that's it for uh, this one. Um, we'll be back with more in a few days' time. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks so much.